to get into the end zone, uh, you know, get that first touchdown. Um, thank you for that birthday. Um, it felt great. You know, um, I thank God and you know my teammates. You know, the O line kind of carried me in there. So um, you know we've been practicing it all week. You know we've been busting our behinds all week. So, you know, all my thanks go to God and my teammates. You know the O line. Thank you. Well, well, let's talk about the O line since since we're talking fat boy ball. Um, that O line. I mean, could you have played on this O line? I don't think so. Man, please. I no, no disrespect to, 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 to Carpenter, but he ain't me. <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit about what you think of the O line, Zach Zach Carpenter and those guys. He is um he is solid and he's mm-hmm. smart. He's not real athletic. But he's a he's got good good technique and he knows how to use it. You know the you know he's not a huge guy because I think he's about three or five, but he, he he gets good position and he you know watching him he's smart he knows what he's doing. Um, the one that surprised me was Rodriguez, the fact that he started the first game because I I, I kind of talked to him a lot because he was playing center, and I don't know for whatever reason I thought he was I, I was a little I was sensing. That he was um, he was a little down last year, so yeah. you know he started following me on Twitter, and so I started keeping in touch with him and talking to him and giving him try to give him some tidbits, and I guess he um, whatever was wrong with him he rebounded because he started the first game. Now he told me he'll be back in a week or two, but then um, Matt McCoy, uh, who bounced around, you know he's. He's sort of like a Swiss Army now. If he plays both guard positions, he plays both tackle positions. Um, he's talented. But the right side with um, Cooper and Mauro Goa, in my opinion, is the best right side in the country. I mean, and Gary, can you tell me why Jalen Rivers didn't play? Did they just because I meant to ask Mario that yesterday? Did they just sit him out? He was, he's had some minor injuries coming out of the Florida game, so they decided to sit him out this, this past week. Well, I, I don't know if he'll play against Ball State, but he'll be fine. Yeah, and Markel Bell actually looked pretty good. I'm proud of Markel, you know, I know he had the one holding call, but I'm kind of ring around the rosy that one, right? Uh, and that's hard to protect, but. Played really well. I thought he played really well. See now, mind you, he was playing against FAMU, and that's one step up from playing against Bruce for 40 snaps, but still. Um, <laughs> but no. Um, and they got the one guy, I can't say his name, uh, Uncle Lolo. Sam Am Okan- I saying that? Okanola. Okanola, yeah. He's going to be good. Um, I mean, the the offensive line, the young guy. I mean, in my opinion, Mirabel is probably the best O line country, one of the two or three best in the country. And <laughs> it's weird when you see him, you can't believe that he's. I mean, you almost think that like, is he what the fifth grade? What's going on? And <laughs> but he he is sharp as a tack. And then of course Mario is down there, and they also have Patter down there. So. We have four coaches that coach the offensive line, and that's a great, you know, it, it, it's coached well. But I got to give credit to JT. Jason Taylor and uh, Salavera got the D-line playing great. Yeah, we talked about them earlier, the the depth. Um, I mean, they, they got, what, about 10 guys that can rotate in there, right? I mean, they, they, they got about 10. I mean, they got I tell you the the one guy that's really coming on and it's going to be interesting in the future is Justin Scott. He looked real good. He's looked real good the first couple of weeks. What it's meant to you. Uh, talk about your development to this point where you feel you are and what it's meant to you to get out there early. 
Yeah, um, you know, just having Coach JT, you know, Hall of Famer, uh, one of the main reasons why I chose the program, um, you know, he just coached me on all the little, the little small things, but also having a lot of vets, you know, Simeon Barrow, you know, transfer from Michigan State, uh, Keen, you know, just having them guys in front of me, uh, just learning, watching the film and seeing what they're doing and just applying it to my game. This is for you, for either you guys or both of you guys. How much do you think getting this early playing time um, can help you guys, you know, as you continue to develop, like, throughout the year going into, you know, the rest of your career? That is a message to the freshman recruits, the 2025-2026 recruits, that if you a dog, you going to get on the field, come to Miami. Mario has installed the blueprint, and we're going to win multiple natties. He got his first sack last week. Um, he was the number one D-tackle in the country, and I saw something where they said that he's exceeded their expectations. Mm. And then you got Tyler Barron, who mm -hmm. it makes me question what's going on at Tennessee because I watched him last year at Tennessee and he was a good ball player. It doesn't make sense that he was so anxious to leave to come here because no matter what we paid him, Tennessee could have matched it. And he was – well. Good. They they have the number one defensive end I think in the in, in the draft in James Pierce, but he played the run and he pass rushed and I think him coming here he's gonna put himself in first round consideration. He's grown up a lot here just in the few months he he's been here. You know I I, I think he might have had some maturity issues at Tennessee, some other things going on. Um, that might have, yeah, I heard there was I heard there was. Him. About your motivation. I mean, you're playing Fanny tonight. A lot of your great plays will be game with that hand. So you clearly are very passionate and motivated about sure. this season. Uh, for me, it's not really about the opponent, to be honest. I kind of, like I said, I'm self driven. Um, I just want to be the best version of me and just kind of maximize this year and, and be the best team that I can be. How much do you feel you've been able to show that so far through the first year? You've had pretty good performances individually. Uh, I feel like I've done it a little bit, but I definitely think there's a lot of room to grow for me um, as a player and as a person, and as a teammate. Uh, be able to see a lot of young guys be able to get reps in a lot of game. How important is that to be able to showcase the depth and be able to get them? For sure. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really imperative uh, when you get those young guys out there. I think the biggest thing is just giving them the confidence just to believe in themselves uh, so that later in the season when we do need them, that they'll be, uh, be able to have a bigger impact. Show that leadership, TB. Damn. Just how business like is this group? I mean, it just sure. it, it just seems again from practices the league guys talk to us during the week and the guys sure. first games. No, no pun intended. I think it starts at the head of the snake. I think Coach Chris Ball does a great job just getting us ready each and every day. I mean, he's been preaching us the, um, the same message all year, so we just kind of follow his lead, just keep the mindset that he possesses. Mario called you. Uh, said you're built like an avatar, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is he's built like an avatar. And he's built like an avatar. And Built like an avatar, and he's built like an avatar, and he's just explosive, and just uh, one of the most natural feels for the game of anyone I've seen. He understands leverage angles. He's really smart. He's locked in. He's in tune with what's going on. He's always trying to figure out how to get better. He works hard. He's tough. Um, he checks all the boxes, and now, um, and now he's full throttle, and I think he's showing everybody what what he's about and like as another hungry dude we've been blessed with some really good players that have come to our program and it's our job to push them and help get them better. Mario, what do you think? I think that's a compliment, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're big and fast. Uh, so just, I mean, how have you improved your, your abilities and your, your, your you know, body? So, shape? I, I, no, I get what you're saying. Uh, for me, I, I mean, it's just been a thing kind of taking it day in and day out, just trying to take every opportunity, you know, not waste any time. I mean, uh, I'm a little bit older, so I'm just trying to just fine tune the little things that I can and just improve on the little things that Coach Taylor may tell me, Coach Chris Ball may tell me, Coach uh, G. So just taking all of everything they say and just putting it to work. How much have you learned from Jason Taylor since he got to you? I mean, it's been, it's been, I, I couldn't put words to it. I'm just basically trying to follow his lead, kind of ask him how he would play situations and just just keep taking the knowledge. And there's been some pretty good D-line in here for the last 20 years. All of a sudden, we had three sacks in the last game. I know it's about the team, about the win. Just how neat is that when you get back to your game? I mean, uh, for me, it was my first three-set game in college, so I mean, it's a big night for me. I'm happy, but I'm really ready to move on and just get uh, ready for our game this week.
Anything else for Tyler? I think I'm uh, better of a player. I mean, I know early in the season, so you know, you know, the level of uh, difficulty is not as high as it will probably be down the road. But how much better of a player do you feel you are now, having gone through the, the, the summer training, so the training camp with these coaches, this team, than you were say in past years? Uh, I mean, I, I think I've definitely grown a lot as a player, but I think just as a person, I think I've taken a step more maturity. Um, my intentions with everything, so the player, but I think just as a person, I think I've taken a step more maturity. Um, my intentions with everything, so I think it's just gotten kind of been more of an intellectual thing, just kind of growing and trying to keep taking a step forward. I heard there was some attitude issues, but yeah. I'm gonna say this: guys come here, and I just, I was just sitting at the table. I was sitting at the table with Roland, and we was eating. And I was just take it in. You could just tell everybody was happy. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you hear that from coaches all the time. But, but then let's just be honest. You left Knoxville, Tennessee to come live in South Florida. I mean, be part of this. I mean, how much, how much, how much recruitment did Mario yeah. going to give you some money to move to Miami? A lot. Uh, both those D linemen, yeah. they 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 made them work to 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 win those recruitments. Tyler Barron and Simeon Barrow. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, Missouri tried to steal Barrow. Correct. Yep. Hey, Simeon, how are you? How you doing, Bedard? Good, good. Uh, I know you mentioned at media day that uh, one of the things that was new to you about playing in Miami was playing in the heat. You know, you played a three thirty game in Gainesville. Now you played down here. Uh, just how's that been going? I'm used to it now, baby. <laughs> I, look, I know I look like a different color than last time y'all see me, but I'm used to now, man. <laughs> After he was already here. Yeah. And then he came to his senses. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, you were talking about kind of the vibe and how everyone seems happy, obviously. <laughs> obviously you won national championships. LT won national championships, too. Is it comparable to, to when you guys were, were playing? I know it's completely different areas, but can you pick up some things? It's similar, but it's different because let's just keep it 100. We were some savages. I mean, and, you know, yesterday I was at <laughs> Mario's office and I was I was talking about something. Oh, I was talking about Amsterdam. I was like, hey, I can still got the pictures. He's like, shh. Cause he had some parents in there, and <laughs> Gosh. you know, Kevin Harris, you're um, you're a great guest. We just don't know where you go sometimes. So <laughs> I'm, I feel like I felt on Saturday when uh, when the quarterback was running, I was holding my breath. <laughs> it's, no, it's, but. It's like me broadcasting the FIU game again. You got to just hold your breath. You know? um, obviously a very, very dark night. Um, you know, one of the lowest points ever um, in this proud program's history. I take full ownership of that, full responsibility uh, for the way that we played tonight. Um, we did nothing to give ourselves a chance to win the football game. Turnovers, penalties, um, red zone, third down defense. Um, the things that good football teams do, uh, we could not do. There was a, you know, we, we, had, we had challenged our guys all week, um, you know, to, you know, we, we had talked about how we had played off of a bye before. We had talked about how we had played in the Central Michigan game. Um, and, and obviously the, 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 the lesson was, was not taught and that goes on to me because there's, there's, there's some <laughs> You just never know where it's going. I, know I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I could go, go that far, but. Pap, you were stripper. Ah, uh, look at that. Pap, you were stripper. Ah, uh, look at that.